Hey guys, how do you stop an auction when a seller is facing foreclosure? Last minute, last minute. Guys, uh, pre-foreclosures is actually time ticking bombs in real estate. These are the only leads that you know for sure they're about to lose the home. They have a timestamp on it. But the issue is most of these sellers will call you either the day of like let's say for example, so today I'm gonna ask Chico, she stopped all the auctions on all the files we work on and you guys can go on transactmasters.com if you need any auction stop, any, uh, now we're local in Georgia, but anywhere in the, in, in the States, right? Absolutely. But so today we're gonna go over the options that we actually use to stop it like last, last minute. If you guys start marketing to foreclosures, either you door knocking, we did a whole uh, video explaining how we do that. So make sure you check those out. Either you text in, cold calling, put in abundant signs. Most of these homeowners, I can tell you guys this, it is absolutely not going to be easy, right? You're gonna have to persist, follow up. They're gonna uh, ghost you, say they got it handled. Jesus is gonna save them, whatever. And then last minute, they call you like, let's say here in Georgia is what? Every Tuesday, the auctions? First Tuesday of the month. First Tuesday of the month. And then they call you at either Monday midnight yeah. or text you. Exactly, midnight. Or Tuesday at like freaking 6 a.m., 7 a.m. Yeah. Go, hey, now I'm ready. Even though you've door knocked me 100 times, I told you to F off. You co called me, I told you to F off. You texted me, I told you to F off. Now I'm ready for you guys to help me. And we're always there to help. So that's what we're gonna address today. How do you stop an auction last minute, last, last minute? So we're gonna go through a couple of options and then we'll talk about, I'm gonna let you call talk about the last option typically we use, but let's, let's, let's address some options. So what is that first option typically when we talk to these homeowners to help them stop the auction? So the first one we go with is? So typically the first one we go with is the loan modification. We give the, the banks a call and see if this is even an option. Right. This is with the conventional loans and with the VA loans. Right, so loan modifications guys, um, is basically they take the seller, say the seller owes 50,000 behind. What, what the bank take it and put it in the back of the loan, right? That's the idea? That is not the idea. Okay, what's the idea? So with the loan modification, the only time they could put it in the back of the loan is if it's an FHA loan. Mm -hmm. So that's a partial, partial claim, claim is essentially. To the back. So basically they starting this over. They're gonna get a new interest rate. Right. And they may very well get a new monthly payment. It just depends on how the bank goes about it. Right, and right now guarantee their payments go up. Guarantee. And their interest rates go interest up. Interest rate goes up. Right. So guys, uh, on a conventional, you can do a traditional loan modification, but on a VA loan, an FHA loan, you can do what is called a partial claim. Now, a partial claim is different though. No, partial claim, in my opinion, so, partial I mean, it's claim. still rough, but okay. it's, it's one of the Go ahead, ones to get. Mm -hmm. You can get it one time. Mm -hmm. VA people normally get it one time. Now, COVID did have it where they can get it once or twice, depending on their situation. So basically what this do, if they owe, if they owe $15,000, what the bank typically do is take what they owe and put it to the back of the loan. Now, mm -hmm. it is due at the end of the 30 year term, but mm -hmm. It goes to the back, they start all over, keep their same payments. Interest rate usually they don't go up. Yeah, here's, here's why I say it's different than the loan modification. A loan modification is they're getting a new loan, new interest rate, right? With a personal claim on the VA and the FHA, what's happening is this. I've done a, a couple of them. HUD, who is actually who yeah. guarantees the VAs and the FHAs government uh, back loans, right? Mm -hmm. HUD actually pay off the lender. So if you owe Wells Fargo $50,000, HUD will pay off Wells Fargo and now you owe that money to HUD. But what HUD does is they take this loan, that $50,000, and then they secure it on the property as a second lien position with zero interest and zero monthly payments on it typically yeah correct right mm -hmm. so it just sits there if you sell the house in 30 years outright then you have to pay right by the way guys this right here doesn't work when they call you here if they call you on tuesday morning these are not working yeah or they call you the days. day before it doesn't work so this is if the sellers still have about 30 days Okay, 30 days. So typically, which we have sellers yeah. we work with and they still have, you know, they get back to us within two weeks yeah. before, blah, blah. So those are, those are the ones we're talking about. So let's say, so we have loan modification, personal claim, and then we have like here in Georgia, what, what, what do we have? We have the Georgia Mortgage Assistance Program. So Georgia Mortgage, uh, oh, mortgage Assistant. Okay, boom. So this is specifically for Georgia, maybe checking your local states, most you know, local, if the- Local states have them, unless the time they timed out, most, mostly every local state have an assistant program. Okay, so you have that for Georgia, and then what is the other one you can think of? So we could do, we could do a short sell, we could do a repayment. Ooh, which we're, we're about to close on one. 
So short sales, guys, just so you know, you can act actually two. Just so you know, you can make money on short sales as an investor. It's just that you have to be the one who initiated it. So if you don't act the sellers before they get foreclosed on or you text them or you cold call them and then you end up getting, let's say you end up finding out, you know what, a cash offer don't work. So the cash buyers wouldn't buy it and creative finance doesn't work. Then you pivot into short sale where you can actually get paid really good money. One of them is going to be $65,000. with The other one is how much? $20,000. $20,000. And guess what? Dozens of investors investors walked away from those deals because the cash offer couldn't work, Absolutely. right? We just did a whole video. Make sure you check it out, breaking it down with Andrew on that one. So short sales, that's an option. That's an option you can use, right? Here is what? This is the very last. This is the very last one. This one right here is if they call you today and the auction is today. And typically here in Georgia is between 10 and 12, right? That the, the foreclose on the properties. Yeah. So Tuesday, first Tuesday of the month, 10 and 12. If they call you at seven. They better be to the courthouse at 830. Yeah. So, so what was, sometimes what the homeowners does, guys, is they do what is called a bankruptcy. They file bankruptcy. There's two chapters, but the, the one that they will really file, that is the easiest to file, is the chapter, chapter 13. 13. Chapter 13, right? This is not something we're advising you to do. We're not attorneys. We're saying some of the homeowners, we're telling you what homeowners that we work with do. Some of them file bankruptcy, temporary bankruptcy, we call it, to postpone or pause the auction for them to have maybe more time to move out, sell the property, whatever, maybe reinstate the loan, right? They can also pay it if they want to, that's reinstating the loan. But that's the last, last resort. If you don't, if you're completely out of options, sellers actually do that. If we were off camera, I would give you more details, but we're not attorneys, consult your attorney, full disclaimer. We're not, we're not telling you to do it, whether you're a homeowner or an investor, we're not telling you to tell your sellers to do this. But we've had sellers that have done this, it postponed the auction, it gives more time to like negotiate with the lenders which is if you go on transactmasters.com that's what they'll do like she talked to sometimes you spend with uh the banks like how many hours oh, on the phone two to three hours on the phone with Can, the lenders do, do you have one case study where where we actually talked to the seller like 100 trillion times and then they call us last yeah, minute it was a property that we're doing a short sell on actually mm. but i had to fight to get them to stop this auction here we with the bank bankruptcy okay so one that we recently so this one bankruptcy, bankruptcy didn't work it didn't work okay guys that's crazy didn't work because well, why? the judge said that's it no more filing bankruptcy because the seller have because they have filed it over and over and this over. is what i'm telling you guys the sellers typically some of them they know that they can do it so they abuse it so they keep filing and keep filing and keep filing and what happens with pre-foreclosure sellers guys is that what is that the 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 the, the crab with the head in the sand what is, what is the analogy don't ask me the, come on the crab in the barrel the, no, no no like like the yeah like like they just bury their head in the sand and don't want to do anything, right? So, because if you file bankruptcy once... I've seen somebody do it for at least, at least a year. Right, they're just buying themselves time, but what I'm saying is they're not doing anything to find a solution. No. They're just filing and filing, filing and filing, filing giving filing themselves filing. more time. And so by the time you talk to them, here the judge is like, no, nope, that's it. over. Now we know you, you filed too much bankruptcies, now it's time to face your problems, Jesus is not coming. All right. So with that being said, guys, uh, what, what was the issue? Now you can you couldn't file that. No, what, what did what did so, we do then? Okay, so we had to do a short sale. This is the one where we. Can oh, this is the one we took a short sale. Got it. Okay. So that's it, guys. It's endless hours on the phone with the banks. Endless. Yeah, and then guys, oftentimes I've done this in the past. I don't know if she called does this, but. I don't deal with this anymore, but when you call the bank, typically you're also dealing with human beings. Some of them don't know what they're doing, no. right? So it happened to me before where I hung up and then called back just to, because I want to talk to somebody who have a lot of experience that was worked with Wells Fargo for years mm -hmm. and they kind of care about people, right? right? So sometimes I talk to somebody, I can tell either they knew or they don't know what they're doing or they have zero empathy that somebody's losing their home. So I hang up and then call back hoping, because remember, you always land on somebody new if you hang up and call, right? Yeah, and the most of the main time, the, when you first call, you get the customer service reps. They really exactly. don't know what they're doing. So yeah, so you're looking to talk sure to who? Make sure speak to loss mitigation. Loss mitigations, guys. You're looking to talk to loss mitigations. But guys, if the seller, which is always, I'm telling you right Right now pre foreclosure is absolutely not easy because I already know what people are gonna do. Like, all right, so if somebody's sitting there asking how can they find these deals, the leads actually find the records and then reach out to these homeowners, see how they can help. Let's give them like three free ways to find it. Okay, so if you are in Georgia, you can use the Georgia public notice and you'll get all the information. You'll even find out what the opening bid is on Georgia public notice. And for what another free one that you can use nationwide, states nationwide is the USA 
legal notice. USALegalnotice.com and then you can go on auction.com. That's yes. that's free too, right? Auction.com auction auction is, is free. And by the way, guys, Zillow.com is free. Yes. You can go on Zillow and that's also free, right? So there is no excuse, but remember the work is not pulling the data. Yeah, but there's another it's, one. Which All one? you have to do is check out the attorney's websites. Ooh. If you check out the attorney's websites, they have a list of all the foreclosures that is going up for the month. Boom. The work comes after you get the data, that's not the work at all. The work comes here. You get the data, you either door knock them, which we do, cold call, text, that's where the work is. Most people give up. I guarantee you, if I were to give you everything right now, step by step, which we have videos of, you will still look at this and six months from now, you'll be in the comments saying you haven't done a deal. Why? Because it's, it's the action, is the people give up on the calling, the door knock, maybe pre-sellers told them, F off. What is the worst thing that ever happened to you on the door knock? Oh. Did, did you ever have a gun pulled on you? No, but I did get threatened to have a gun. Over, if, if you don't get off the porch? She was gonna shoot me. Do you do you go like packing? Do you do you do no, packing? No, I say no. I just tell her straight up. I understand. I know what you're going through. I know this is a hard time for you, and I have you know I show empathy. You have to empathize with these people. They're going through a lot. Boom. No, absolutely, guys. They're going through a lot. Two, you're a stranger. Mm -hmm. Three, you're not the only one. There's two hundred exactly. other people co-calling them, texting them, door knocking them, leaving letters on top of the lender, harassing them, right? The, the debt collectors. So these people are going through a lot. Is anxiety, is stress. It's, that's why you gotta persist until they trust you, willing to talk to you. Some of them, I've talked to homeowners that literally ended up like alcoholic because of this, right? And some of them go through trauma. Like one of the sellers I was dealing with, her, her, so her daughter's ex-boyfriend, because they broke up, he came in the house, this was in New Jersey, came in the house and literally killed her mom and her three-year-old son, literally. So you guys, you, it's, it's a lot of trauma, right? So by the way, if you're a homeowner, please, she has a Jamaican husband always packing in the car somewhere. So trust me, she's not alone. Don't play with that shit. If you're a woman out there door knocking, do not door knock alone. It can get dangerous, but it's definitely worth the time. Door knocking to me is the best because like you get the best leads. It's face to face. Most of them disconnect their numbers. It's just a no brainer to door knock, but you still have to persist. You still have to insist. It's not because they're going through foreclosure. That means they're going to hand you the keys to their property as soon as you door knock. So you have to use a lot of empathy. You have to care. You have to care. It's not about you. It's about solving problems for the sellers. So guys, that's how we stop the auctions last minute. Typically the sellers, they do the, the bankruptcy option, which again, we're not advising you, but it is what it is. If they do it what do we have to do before we close so we if we have to get we have to get the bankruptcy dismissed before you can close yeah we, we cannot close with the bankruptcy anyway so it's, it's a temporary bandage and we have to discharge it uh, which is what it's, it's not a complicated process right so now we usually just walk the sellers through again we're not advising them of anything right we just walk them through um, how to do it so no it's typically easy you write a dismissal letter mm. and you have to fill out a certificate of service and you send it in and you're good to go you can even take it down in Boom, that's where transactmasters.com comes into play, guys. We're typically too busy chasing the next contract. We don't deal with it, we let her deal with it. Plus, she's the bank whisperer. There's a lot of other strategies. We might do some uh, series on like some of the things sometimes you have to do outside of the conventional ways to postpone auctions. People have no idea the amount of work that comes with it. And Ooh. if you are somebody who's chasing these deals and you're doing the acquisitions, you're doing the thing, you're making the calls, you're door knocking, and you also want to like call the banks and negotiate these things, guys, you're absolutely leaving money on the table because you're spending too much time doing something you shouldn't be doing. So reach out to transactmasters.com. Uh, leave a comment below. Let us know what your takeaways. If you have more questions, then we can create another video answering your questions. Uh, and you can always book a consulting call, right? With Transact Masters. Yes. If you market it to pre-foreclosures. But guys, make sure you check out the whole playlist of us also having conversation with the sellers. And we'll see you guys in the next video. What's, what's the name of the channel? It is pre-foreclosure duo. Yeah. We'll put the link in below. Yeah, we put the links in, in, in below. It's pre-foreclosure as in seller closer. Okay. Do you? All right, guys. But we put all the links down here and uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Until then, stay bold and be bold. Boom, boom, boom.